So as promised, I will cover thermal imaging in this video. I'm not even going to try and teach you all you need to know to become a certified thermographer. After all, I was in training for 64 hours to get my current level of certification and then one or two days a year to stay current. I will, however, show you my cameras and a bunch of pictures and video and explain a little bit about the technology. Welcome, glad you're able to join me. I hope you're doing well. If you're new here, my name is Mike. I'm a drone pilot, a level two thermographer, level one optical gas imaging technician, and a photographer. So I've been a thermographer for several years now. I trained for my level one certification in 2013, and I'm still amazed by what I can see with my thermal cameras. If you really think about this technology, it's science fiction type stuff. I can see heat. I can see moisture behind walls, missing insulation, and all kinds of other issues that can't be seen with normal photography or inspection methods. I can also see in total darkness and through smoke and haze, as long as the object is a different temperature than its surroundings. Before we get too far into this, we should probably run through a very, very quick history of thermal imaging, and then we'll get into the fun stuff. So in 1800, Sir William Herschel, an accomplished musician and amateur astronomer, discovered radiant heat. I'm not going to get too deep into the long and somewhat confusing story about how that happened, but basically, he was measuring temperatures of light versus visible transmission to help with building better filters for his telescopes. He set his thermometer down just outside the visible light from his prism, and noticed that the temperature was still rising. This discovery eventually led to the discovery of infrared energy and eventually the formation of the FLIR company. They started trying to build high-performance, low-cost thermal imaging systems for aircraft in 1978 to help pilots see in total darkness, adverse weather conditions, and through smoke and haze. They've bought up several companies over the years to leverage other technologies, allowing them to become the global leader in thermal imaging. Like I said, a very quick history. I could go on for hours, but we'll call that good for now. Now for the fun stuff. So this is my FLIR E8 XT thermal imager. As a measurement temperature range of minus 20 to 550 degrees Celsius or minus 4 to 1022 degrees Fahrenheit and a resolution of 320 by 240. I use this guy inside buildings because my drone is far too big to fly. It's a radiometric imager as well and that just means that every pixel in the image is a temperature measurement. So I basically have 76,800 non-contact thermometers in my hand when I'm using this. This little guy is my FLIRVIEW PRO R that I mount on my drone. Has a resolution of 640 by 512 or 327,680 non-contact measurement points. Sure you notice that the resolution is a lot higher than my handheld. With good reason. With my handheld imager I can get very close to the issue if I need to. Not so much with my drone. More resolution equals better measurement and more accurate temperature from a greater distance. If you also notice, the lenses don't look like regular camera lenses. That's because they're actually metal. Germanium to be specific. Glass is thermally opaque and that just means it won't transmit thermal energy. It conducts heat pretty good, but that doesn't help us for the most part. So there are also lenses built out of calcium fluoride and sapphire. As you've probably guessed by now, I can get real nerdy when it comes to this technology. It's just so powerful and useful. Anyways, as promised, cool pictures and videos. So here's a shot of a hand warmer. Neat, huh? Oh, you can't see it? How about now? So now you can see the hand warmer in total darkness. Imagine a person lost at night and no lights in the area, no way to see them. I mean, you could wander around with a flashlight and hope for the best, but with my cameras, they're basically fluorescent. 
Before you ask, yes, I can see wildlife like this too, and no, I'm not able to use my drone to hunt. Laws are very specific. I can use my drone to scout, but I'm not able to use it to track down animals to kill them. I've gotten the question on several different occasions, so I know hunters see the possibilities right away. There are a few places in the States that it is allowed for vermin extermination, but not in Canada. So here's a picture of the electrical panel in my house. I actually had to set this one up. The, break, or the wire that you see that is a lot warmer than the rest has a heater and my freezer running on it. And no, this is not normal, but it shows you what we actually see. The current is well below the point where I would actually worry, but I had to load up the breaker to be able to show you something. Now here's something really cool. Here we have a cup of hot water. As you can clearly see, as boring as all get out. However, if we switch to the thermal view, you can see the convection currents. This was a lab exercise in my level one training, and I still think it's freaking awesome. Anyways, now you have a very basic understanding of what we're looking at when we take thermal pictures and videos. You can get an idea of how useful this technology could be in helping see where you need to repair your house to save money on your heating or cooling bills, maybe in a search and rescue situation, or even firefighting. So hopefully you got some useful information from this video. If you want more information, feel free to contact me however you are the most comfortable. Also, if you don't mind on your way out, if you could hit one of the thumbs, preferably the one pointed up, leave a comment if you would like a deeper dive into this topic, and if I provided you with some value, please consider subscribing. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram, links in the description below. So until next time, bye bye.